Stuart, what did you make of that game today? Simply not good enough, Scott. Simply not good enough. Um, you know, can't make any excuses in, in, in the sense that when you find yourself two goals down, um, as always, I'll look at the goals and look how we find ourselves behind in the game. Um, but for me, it does come down to decision making again. It does come down to uh, latching onto the job that you have, be it an open player, be it from dead balls, uh, and, and, and making sure you do it. Um, a corner kick comes in. We know and we've, we've spoken about for the last couple of days the threat that Kent carries. Peels into the back post area where we've seen him going, uh, seen that same delivery, um, and we don't deal with it. Very simply, we try and match players up, and we try and ensure that we give them the best, uh, the, the, the best preparation from knowing what they're going to face, um, and we get it wrong again. That's two set plays on, on Tuesday. It's another one again today, um, but it seems to be coming from different quarters as well. You know, sometimes if you see that one specific um, that, that that starts to hurt you, whether it be in a front area, a back area, one specific player, then it becomes easy to change. But the difficult but becomes that it starts to it starts to fester and it starts to spread throughout, and I think the second goal symptomatic of where we are and and the, and the run that we find ourselves on. Um, you know, Cam Butcher goes to ground, looks as if he, he he comes out with the ball, but our reaction as a group of players seems to be to disperse and go away from where their danger players are. Uh, I'm looking at Shanklin, I'm looking at Boyce. I've watched these guys for years uh, pose a threat as they did again today, um, but they seem to have the freedom in the middle of Fur Park, which can never be the case. You know, it's not something that we we encourage, we always think about the ball, the danger, what's running about you. Um, but again, that sort of naivety seems to creep in where we start to wander in areas where we can't affect the, the second part of that tackle. Um, and as I say, once you see Shanklin going through and goal and you see him bearing down on Liam Kelly, you know that you're in trouble, of course you do. So um, there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for it. We have to take responsibility and we have to ensure that uh, those are the aspects that, 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 that don't happen again. But again, I've, I've spoke about this for a number number of weeks. Um, I, I spoke to the players at the end there about taking ownership for it. I know without question myself and the staff will, um, but the players have to take responsibility for what they're doing in big moments. It's not all right to give away cheap goals. It's not all right to switch off from your job. Um, and, and, and as I say, very simply, we have to we have to try and arrest the form that we find ourselves in just now. And we have to come up with a formula be it slightly different from the one that we had that, that brought us success and brought us a number of points. I um, understand that there's been a big change over in terms of the personnel here um, and we lost a lot of guys that, 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 that were good within that um, but I still genuinely believe that we've got guys there that can perform better in big moments um, and, and save putting us in a position where yet again we're trying to clamber and trying to scramble to see if we can get back into a game of football. Now at the international break, you mentioned the run of games that we've been on but how important is it for the players to feel that ownership and that responsibility for the position that they were in just now? Yeah, again, I, this, isn't a, this isn't a time where I'm going to start pointing the finger at the players and just saying it's you know it's all them. I always talk about it. I take this job. I want to do this job. It's a job that I believe I can do. And I think that um, certainly a, a record over a larger period of time, a longer period of time shows that you can. So, you know, I take my responsibility in the fact that if there's aspects to change and, you know, you hear... Uh, supporters being disgruntled when you take off the likes of Amika Bireth, they've seen him score goals and they've seen him being bright, but again we look at the energy levels, we've asked an awful lot of somebody like Mika Bireth in recent days and, and, and weeks to go and try and knock out sort of 80 odd minutes, 90 minutes of games of football, uh, having come back off 8 weeks injury, so again I, w I, w I would like to think people understand that so we try and freshen it up, we try and make those decisions in game, um, probably the bigger picture is uh, that we have to look to, to see how we, we stop that softness that we have in our team be it from dead balls, be it from open play, um, goals seem to be coming in different forms against us at this minute in time. Um, and, I, and I genuinely, Scott, think that the, the only way to deal with that is that proactive mindset, um, making sure that your structure's correct when you don't have the ball, um, and, and, and probably making the most simple decision, which is to be able to defend your corner and make sure you make contact with somebody inside the box uh, to ensure that balls aren't dropping inside your six-yard box, that we aren't giving good strikers and good players freedom in the pitch. And I think the one thing that we certainly learned in some of the guys that are you in that dressing room have learned over this last stretch is that there are good players in this league and there are people that will punish you clubs with a, a huge budget and, and, and the likes of Hearts um, they invest that money because they've got good players um, and, and at this minute in time it almost seems that we have a sort of acceptance that we might get away with it you're not you're going to get punished and I think today was an example of that yet again Just finally how do we use this international break in our favour now? 
Uh, I think what we do is the same as what we've done in the last two, and I know that sounds crazy, that sounds silly, because getting into the first international break off our last victory against Hearts, um, you know, we were we were full of confidence, we were playing really well, um, we got a clean sheet at Tynecastle and won with 10 men, um, and we worked hard that, that international break, we didn't give anybody a free holiday or a, a free ride yet, and then the second one we done the same, because we went in off the back of a, a, a defeat, I think it was, to Livingston, and we felt that going into that international break, it was important that we'd done very similar, um, um, so from our side of things, we have to evidence again to the players, we have to really make it abundantly clear where we went wrong today and why we put ourselves under pressure um, and we get back to work, you know, we, we, we put ourselves in a position where we're going to get back on the training pitch and we're going to work exceptionally hard. That time will be good for some players, I reference Mika Bireth, I reference the likes of uh, John Obika, guys that are starting to come back in um, and we need to get minutes on the pitch and we need to work exceptionally hard and for myself and the staff, um, it's, it's as always with that vision and that thought process of how do we make things better better, you know, the set up of our team, the decisions that we make from, you know, the start of a game, before a game, we have to ensure that they're crisp and we have to make sure that there's something that can help the players and then go and try and lift this place again. Thanks for your time, Stuart.